There's a lot of different masks that we can use in Adobe Camera Raw. A good analogy for masks may be the difference between a flathead or a crosshead screwdriver. Now while they're similar tools, we do need the right one for the task, but sometimes we're going to need both of them to complete the overall job, and masks are much the same. One of the masks I find myself using quite a bit is the Linear Gradient, and I think that's the right tool for this job. In this shot, I've completed all the global editing, light, colour, clarity, cropping and straightening. But if we look at the left side of the image, and perhaps the top two, we can spot a weakness in tone, but if I darken the overall image any more, then I make the right side of the image far too dark. This is the perfect job for a linear gradient. Now this mask works much the same as the ones we looked at in video 15, but we apply it slightly differently. So go into the masking options on the right hand side, I'll select the linear gradient. Now we have to apply this manually, or we certainly have to apply the mask. So I can click and drag, and it depends really where I drag to, because if I drag much further, I obviously cover a much larger area of the image we're going to edit, and also the edge of the overlay gets softer, so we're not going to see the edits we make. But we can make them quite tight when there's a need to do that, maybe along the horizon in a shot like this. But we've got two aspects of this tool. We've got the overlay, and we know the overlay is going to be removed whenever we move one of those sliders. But you notice, as I move my mouse away from the pins there, that's what they're called, they disappeared. I'm going to touch the V key on my keyboard, because normally we would want to see them all of the time. But that V key is quite important, because we do need to turn these on and off. So the pins, what can we do with those? Well, we can pick up the entire thing and we can move it on or partially off the image. We get the opportunity to adjust it either way or even rotate it when we need to. So we've got a lot of adjustment here. But in addition to that, let me just do something a little bit wild for a moment. Let me push the color way up that once I actually lose the overlay, and if I even lost the graduated pins here, I can touch the V key at any time, and I can move this about even while we've got the changes made within the mask. So we've got the ultimate flexibility here. But what I'll do, I'm gonna push this back to that position, I'm going to bring this, well I'll tell you what we'll do, let's go up to the top right, let me go to right click and delete all masks, let's start from scratch here, select the linear again, because now you know exactly what those masks and pins are going to do. What I want to do here is to darken about at least half of this image. So I need to start anywhere just inside. If I start here, of course, anywhere left of my cursor is now going to be solid, whereas I could start at the edge. You'll get a feel for this very quickly. I'm gonna click and drag in. You can see I'm dragging over half the way. You'll soon get a feel, as I just said. Now you can actually remove the pins, but you don't have to. If I wanted to just drop down the exposure, there you can see that tiny little change, but look at the difference that it makes to the image. Let me go back to my main tab, and let's just take a couple of seconds to see that difference. Now, of course, if the right-hand side of my image was a little bit too dark, then I could apply a mask to that. When I go back to my mask this time, I need to select the second mask by going to this little white cross. But I can do the same thing. There's the shortcut, G key. So I could click and drag. And on this side, I could say, is there anything I can do about those shadows? Can I just lift them a little bit? Not a lot, but just a little bit of balance. And when I do that, now I'm thinking, do I want a little bit more warmth in the sand? You get the idea. 
Now I'd like to put even a third gradient at the top of the screen. So I need to select it and click and drag. What am I going to do here? Well, I want to do what I can with the highlights. Let's bring down the exposure a little bit. Maybe we'll bring the blacks down a little bit and the whites up a little bit. And at this stage, if I wanted to drag this down or I wanted to bring this bit down because I wanted the effect to come more down over here, you can see how we can achieve that. Once again, I'll go back to my basic tab here because if we wanted to add any edits now which affect the entire image, we do have to come away from the masks. Graduated linear masks I use practically in every shot. Now what I like about the most is their flexibility because even now if I'm looking at my image it's quite natural to want to change your mind. So if I go back to my masks I can mouse over each of these masks and I can see which area of the image that mask covers. And there you can see the one that's covering the top because if I select that, I'm straight back into my overlay and my pin. Because if I want to darken the sky even more at the top because I've had second thoughts, I can do so. But going back to my basic edit panel, just take a look at the image from a critical point of view. Can you see a bit of a, a lightness around this tree? in amongst the branches and a little bit there. It sort of dry, draws your eye into that point. So I'm going to stray off the linear gradients a little bit because this is typical of what we're going to need to do. So going back to my masks, I'm going to create another mask, but I'm going to create a brush. The brush works as it says from a brush and we get the options here. Keep the flow really low. Think about what we want to do around that tree. Well, maybe I'd want to bring it up a little bit, but what I need to do is to maybe kill the highlights a little bit. A tiny bit of exposure, not too much, because I don't want to affect the surrounding area. I can make my brush slightly smaller. Then I can just carefully brush in this area. That seems a little heavy to me. I'll drop it down even more just a little bit just to give that a little bit of balance control zero will fit the image back on screen a couple of more touches you can see the effect and i haven't even had to go back and change the exposure or highlights but i could if i wish and there on screen you can see the pin if i touch the v key it'll disappear but if I wanted to touch the V key again because I wasn't happy with what I did, I can select that pin and of course I can remove it. But the best way would be to go to the mask and remove it from here. Delete mask 4. Finally, we'd open the image up into Photoshop, which is what I've done here. Remember though that you can go back to that thumbnail in Bridge at any time. Not only are all your global edits saved ready for you, but all of the masks are retained too. You can go back into any of them and make adjustments. And we can take a look here at the before and after. All the changes here are just a few masks. I'll see you next time.